Welcome and good afternoon. Uh, this is the Great Plains Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're so glad you've chosen to join us today and learn about our six universities. If you have questions for any of our panelists during the presentation, please use the Q&A button below. Um, you will be able to ask questions throughout the presentation. So if there's something that you want to know right now, you certainly can type that in. Otherwise, as the presenters are presenting, ask those questions. Um, as this is a webinar, your camera and your microphone are off, so we can't see you or hear you, but we do know that you're out there. If you did not get to see all the colleges you wanted today, know that there is going to be another college fair just like this one in April or you can go back to the website at which you registered for this program and review any or all of the recordings of the sessions that we've had today. The way this will work is each one of our six institutions will have six minutes to present. And so without any further ado, I'd like to rock chalk Jayhawk for the University of Kansas. Pretty good. Do you know the story of rock chalk? I don't. People are always, there's a great debate of where the original one is. So I'll just leave that up for, for you guys to decide. So welcome uh, to our presentation. I will go ahead and get started. We really appreciate you guys being here today. I know that while we've been in the virtual world for a while, it still doesn't feel normal yet. So really appreciate you guys. My name is Gretchen. I'm an admissions rep at the University of Kansas. My friend and coworker, Jolie Webb, will be answering questions and sending links as I work through the presentation. So feel free to ask any questions you have and click on any links that she sends. We're really excited to talk to you guys about KU today. Um, I always kind of like to start with the numbers to lay down a good foundation. So as you can see, we're a school of about 19,000 undergrads, uh, which is very mid-range, which is nice because it's not a massive school. You're not going to get swallowed by the student body, but you're also going to have a lot of variety. It's not going to be the same 50 people in all of your classes. Um, what's nice is that speaking of classes, we like to make that number feel as small as we can in the classroom. And actually, 75% uh, of our classes at KU are actually 30 students or less. So like I said, you're going to have a lot of variety in your day, um, but you're definitely not going to feel lost in the crowd. You can see we sit at about 60% in-state, 40% out-of-state. I'm an out-of-state student, or I was an out-of-state student. Uh, Jolie was an in-state student. I guess it's worth mentioning that we're both alumni. Um, and so that's that's another, I think, really great sweet spot. People coming literally from all 50 states, all over the world, and all over the state of Kansas. Um, I like to talk about our um, number there. You can see for students that identify as students of color, we're right over a quarter. Um, that's an important number in our office. It's a number we talk about because it's an emphasis, uh, an emphasized number in our office. And then you can see a couple stats about our freshman class last year um, and just kind of where they fall academically because obviously that is an important part of college. So now that you kind of have an idea of what our student body looks like, I'm going to get into what we call the KU difference. And I know that you guys are all hearing the same things from a lot of schools, things about housing, about tuition, um, all, all of those things because they're important, but since I only have six minutes with you today, I really wanted to kind of help set KU apart, but also tell you that these things that make KU unique, unique are a part of all KU experiences. So the first part of the KU difference is the fact that we're members of the Association of American Universities or the AAU. And this is something I would honestly be looking for in your college search process beyond KU, just kind of in general, because this is a really big deal. As you can see, it's a pretty small group of universities in the country. We actually make up less than 1%, and we get to split 60% of all research funding. So if research is something you have thought about, know that KU is a tier one research institution. But maybe you're somebody like me, I came in studying education, research was not in the front of my brain, but I very quickly learned that even if you're not a science student at KU, even if you're not a grad student at KU, everybody is doing research, including our professors. We have really, really great faculty at KU. Another really great part of being members of the AAU is that you're gonna have great professors. But KU is actually significantly smaller than the average AAU school by about 10,000 students. And so this money is going even further on our campus and we've really heavily invested in experiential learning. So these things look like we've rebuilt our gen eds at KU, we've gotten rid of undecided majors. We fund a ton of really cool experiential learning opportunities at KU. And I think what's most exciting to talk about and what you guys will be most excited to hear about is our study abroad. This is a really big deal on our campus. Jolie actually studied abroad. 30% of KU students study abroad and the national average is only 10. So that's a really big deal on our campus. Moving away from the classroom and into the community, 
Uh, Lawrence is the place that KU is located. This is my very favorite part of KU. We're a true college town, so it's not a real community. It's not a city, an urban community. Uh, it very much has that quintessential college town feel. Um, we have a great nightlife. We're actually the number one live music destination between Denver and Chicago, which is cool. People like Chance the Rapper, Lil Yachty, 2 Chain, Snoop Dogg. We're all here while I was studying at KU. Um, big food town, but if the nightlife isn't your thing, we also have a lot of ways to get outside. I know that Jolie has definitely taken advantage of this. We have a lake and a state park about 10 or 15 minutes away from campus. It's just a fun place to be a college student. Last part of the KU difference is the Jayhawk identity. I don't want to spoil anything for anybody, but the Jayhawk is not real. It's a made up bird. So I always kind of like to start with the story of the Jayhawk and I'll kind of condense it down as much as I can today. But Long time ago, right when KU was sort of being founded, the Civil War was taking place. And at the time, Kansas was a free state. And the people that fought to keep Kansas free as pressure grew for them to not be anymore were called the Jayhawkers. And that's who we are and that's who we represent. We're really proud of that. And that legacy has continued, as you can see. We had students march to make Martin Luther King Day a national holiday. Last summer, we had students march for Black Lives Matter. Um, but really more than anything, that Jayhawk legacy just means getting involved in something, finding your something that you're passionate about, whether it's Greek life or BSU or women in engineering, we have over 600 clubs and organizations at KU that will help you do that. And because like I said, it's a real bird or not a real bird, it is not a real bird. Um, that passion really will carry you for the rest of your life in the career field. We have an organization in Hollywood to help Hawks in Hollywood get hired. We have basically LinkedIn exclusively for Jayhawks. Um, it's how I got my job. So know that as cool as it is to be a Jayhawk in Lawrence, it'll really be something that will follow you in a really positive way for the rest of your life. So hopefully you guys are excited. These are our admissions criteria. Jolie will link our admissions website. So feel free to pop, pop around on there or just take a picture of this slide. Um, so just so you know, these are our shared admissions criteria. And also, if you're interested in visiting campus, we are doing visits Monday through Friday right now for just anybody, but we also just started offering admitted senior days for our students that have already been admitted. So if you wanna scan that QR code, you can totally do that. We'd love to have you in Lawrence, especially now that it's springtime. So that's all I have. I know that that was quick, but please send any questions you have our way. Thank you and rock chalk. Thanks, Gretchen. Well, the Jayhawk might not be real, but a lion definitely is. So let's hear about the Missouri Southern Lions. Yes, let's hear about the Missouri Southern Lion. Yes. I don't have any uh, stories about the lion, so sorry about that, but all right. So, okay. So thank you for taking the time today uh, to learn a little bit more about Missouri Southern. My name is Jason Stockbridge, and I am one of the admissions counselors here uh, in Joplin. So, um, our contact information for the Office of Admissions and my contact information is on the left. If you would like on the right hand side, please go ahead and scan this QR code or the web address listed below. This will take you to our inquiry card. So if you like everything presented today, I would say go ahead and fill out that inquiry card. I will leave this up for a few more minutes so you can take a picture of that or jot down that uh, web address. Okay, so why should you pick Missouri Southern? The faculty to student ratio is 19 to one. So you're gonna have that undivided attention inside and outside the classroom. Also small class sizes. At Missouri Southern, we have 30 students or less in every class. And the student body represents 48 different countries and 42 different states. But most importantly, we offer in-state tuition opportunities at MSSU for the eight states that border Missouri, including Texas and Hawaii. So y'all qualify for the Lion Pride discount and you can still receive university and academic scholarships. Also this year, we're rolling out new MOSO Merit uh, freshman scholarships. And these are based off of your high school cumulative GPA and your SAT and ACT scores. The high tier premier is 5,000, the, uh, the middle tier gold is 3,500, and the low tier is green at 2,000. We also have competitive scholarships. So we have foundations, performance, and athletics. At Missouri Southern, we're division two in athletics. So whatever you get for athletics, you get for athletics, and whatever you get for academic, you get for academic. We don't split the two, you get both. And also we have honors scholarships, and you must meet one of the following uh, 
requirements listed below to qualify. Our city is perfect for college life. Moso's campus is located in the beautiful Ozark Mountains, right off of historical Route 66 near I-44. And Joplin is the fourth largest city in the state of Missouri. And we offer concerts, sporting events, and nightlife. Top programs and degrees are business administration, criminal justice, teacher education, health professions, and biology. MOSO has 140 different majors to choose from for certificates, associates, and bachelor's degrees, and we have six different master's degrees programs as well. So you're probably wondering what the admissions requirements are at Missouri Southern. You don't have to have all four of these to be admitted. You must have one in order to be admitted to Missouri Southern. So you have to have a 2.25 cumulative high school GPA or a 21 on the ACT or a 1060 on the SAT. And we super score both of those or be in the top 50 percentile of your graduating class. If you liked everything that's been presented so far, I would recommend applying today at mssu.edu backslash apply. So the estimated tuition cost for one year at Missouri Southern is right at 14,000 a year. Now this does not include your scholarship, so it's gonna be, it's not gonna be more than that, but it's gonna be way less than that. And this also includes the most expensive meal plan and the most expensive housing option as well. So with that, we have four different housing options and five different meal plans. But we're right now, we're very excited about the new dormitory we're building, and it's called Lion Village, and it should be online this fall of 2021. And also, we offer uh, traditional quad suites and apartments. Now, the suites and apartments, they go very quickly uh, by the end of the spring semester. So if there's a particular dorm or a particular class that you're interested in, I would say go ahead and apply today submit your official high school transcript, your official test scores, and your official dual credit transcript as well, because that starts the ball rolling uh, once you're admitted for uh, housing and financial aid. Now with us at Missouri Southern, how financial aid works is basically we look at work study, scholarships, and grants, and hope everything is covered under those three before we look at loans lastly, okay? So Rory and I, that's our mascot. Uh, so are you ready to roar at MSSU? We hope so. We hope you liked all the information being presented. If so, we do have two signature events uh, that you can register for. One is called Join the Pride in the Fall or Show Me Moso in the Spring. And we do have one uh, Show Me Moso uh, uh, March 19th. So that's a Friday and it's from 1.30 to 4.30, but you can register at the website provided. And also these are signature where you can meet the president, the faculty, current students and take a tour of campus. But if you can't make those events, we do have campus tours. And per the pandemic, we do offer on campus and virtual. And those are Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. And then on Fridays in the spring, 1 p.m. So if you have any questions or would like to have an interest packet, here's my contact information again please get in touch with me as soon as possible because Rory and I would like to see you on campus. Go Lions. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. So now let's blow on over to Iowa State and learn about the Cyclones. There we go. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Dakota Carpenter and I'm a senior admissions counselor with Iowa State. So excited that you all are here today and that I get to share a little bit with you about Iowa State. So when you are looking at schools and what you're considering, distance might be one of those coming as an out-of-state student. So just to give you a little bit of an idea, we're about three hours from Omaha, Nebraska, three hours from Kansas City, and about eight from the Oklahoma City metro. Just to give you a general idea of where we're at, we're essentially located within the state of Iowa and about 35 to 40 minutes north of Des Moines which is the capital of the state of Iowa as well. So if driving eight hours, for those of you that might be coming from the Oklahoma City area, um, if that's not something that you're interested in that drive, you can fly into Des Moines, there is an airport there, um, and then get up to Ames that way as well. So when you're considering schools, why should you be looking at Iowa State? Iowa State is home to the first public veterinary school in the nation. So a pre-vet is something that you're interested 
in pursuing, we could be an excellent spot for you to begin to explore that passion of yours. We have top rank programs in areas like engineering and apparel merchandising and design. And we have a 96% placement rate for our students. So this means that within six months of graduation, 96% of our graduates are either employed full-time in a position or are enrolled full-time in a graduate or professional school program of their choice. Ames has consistently been ranked as one of the best college towns in the US. And as a double alum of Iowa State myself, I can totally understand why that is. There's always something for students going on both on campus and within the city of Ames as well. If you are obviously looking to attend college and after that wanting to step into a dream job, start that dream career, Iowa State could be a great place for you to land a dream internship that sets you up for success in that area. We host some of the largest career fairs in the nation with companies that are coming from all over the state of Iowa, all over the US, and even some coming internationally, specifically to Ames to recruit Iowa State students because they are aware of the caliber of education that they're receiving and the faculty that they are not only learning from in the classroom, but able to conduct research alongside as well in different labs across campus. We have a little over 31,000 students. That is our total enrollment at Iowa State. So we are a fairly large research institution, also members of the AAU. Our students are coming from all 50 states within the US and over 100 different nations from across the globe. So you are likely to meet someone coming from your own backyard, but also someone from a completely different area of the world. So all of those numbers and statistics come together to create that one unique adventure that you can have with us at Iowa State. We offer 100 different majors across campus, so you're obviously going to find things in areas like STEM, but you're also going to find areas like world languages, marketing, business, agriculture, um, and the list goes on and on. So if you know what you want to study, that's fantastic. If you're still browsing your options, I would definitely recommend taking a look at Iowa State and what we have to offer you. Outside of academics, our students are involved in 900 student clubs and organizations. They're in a variety of leadership organizations and positions on campus. We offer study abroad opportunities on all seven continents, and we send typically over 1,000 students each year to participate in those programs. We have about 6,000 students participating in our living learning communities, helping them get connected to their fellow cyclones that are in similar areas of study, and a little over 1,000 students participating in our university honors program. Now, staying active in sports is something you did in high school that you're hoping to continue in college. Participating in our intramural sports alongside 10,000 other Cyclones is a great way to get involved as well. On your screen now are admissions course requirements. So once you graduate high school to be admitted to Iowa State, you'll need what you see on your screen. One thing you wanna make a note of is that if you're looking for a major within our Liberal Arts and Sciences College or our College of Engineering, there are a couple additional requirements. So you'll want to note three years for liberal arts instead of two for the general admissions requirements and both liberal arts and engineering expect their students to come in with two years of a single foreign language as well. Once you've verified that you've met those application, uh, excuse me, admissions requirements, when you apply, we're going to use what we call the Region Admission Index or RAI to determine your admission eligibility. We'll use the formula that's on your screen. We'll compile all of the information, input it into the formula. And if you score a 245 or higher, you're automatically admitted to Iowa State without any question. One thing to note, we are test optional for both admission and merit-based scholarship consideration for both fall 21 and fall 22. So if you choose to apply to Iowa State without taking in or submitting your test scores, uh, we're going to take a deeper look into your GPA in those high school core courses that you took. Our application process is pretty straightforward. You'll apply via our website. There's a $40 application fee that can be deferred if that is a barrier to your ability to apply. You'll self-report all of your information on the application, so your GPA, your test score if applicable, and all the courses that you've taken. If you apply with test scores and all of your information is processed correctly, you'll be able to know your RAI immediately and whether or not you will be admitted to Iowa State. If you apply without test scores, we're gonna do an individual review of your record and most students have a decision within 24 to 48 hours. So a really quick turnaround here with us. After you've been accepted, you'll be able to explore your scholarship opportunities through our scholarship portal and you won't have to request any official final transcripts until after you graduate high school. I'm going to drop a link in the chat. Apologies to my KU colleagues. I hit enter a little too early. 
but I added a couple links there. So if you are interested in requesting more information, feel free to check it out. Thank you. Thanks so much, Dakota. We're gonna head west to Western Colorado and the Mountaineers. Brianna. Perfect, thank you so much, everyone. My name is Brianna Clark and I am a recruiter with Western Colorado University. And I'm excited to share a little bit about that with you today. So moving in, uh, Western Colorado University is located in Gunnison, Colorado. So right in the heart of the Rocky Mountains, which means our students have really easy access to all things Colorado adventure, hiking, camping, skiing, snowboarding, paddle, paddle boarding down the river, you name it, we have it. 30 miles north of us is Crested Butte for beautiful skiing and snowboarding. And there's even a bus that drives you back and forth from Gunnison to Crested Butte. So you don't even have to drive yourself to the ski slopes. 45 minutes to the east of us is Monarch Pass for more skiing and snowboarding. Uh, 10 miles south of us is Hartman's Rocks, which has 750 plus miles of mountain biking and hiking trails that are very easy to find a new hike every day that you're in Gunnison. And then 18 miles to the west of us is Blue Mesa Reservoir, which is the largest body of water in Colorado, and how our students are able to have competitive ski, uh, sea kayaking uh, for the students. Along with all of that adventure that's around us, 80% of the lands surrounding Gunnison are public lands. So we like to call it, it's our nature's best classroom or our outdoor laboratory. So all of our environment and, uh, environment and sustainability students, biology students and recreation outdoor education students are getting out into the field and having hands-on experiences in the valley that are really kind of amping up their uh, academic experiences. At Western, our, uh, we have 3,000 students in our undergraduate program, uh, which means that our class sizes are small. Our average class size is 17 students, but we guarantee that you'll never have a class with more than 66 students in it your entire career at Western. That's our largest campus on, or, or largest classroom on campus. That's why we can make that guarantee for you. On the screen here is just a graphic so you can see what it's like of having 17 students in class as opposed to maybe a 500 uh, seat lecture hall and knowing that difference. So if it's important to you to have that smaller class size, that's where Western is able to offer that for you. Your professors get to know you on a two, uh, first name basis two weeks into freshman year, if not sooner. And they'll know if you're coming from out of state or not and are gonna give you a little bit of extra, making sure that you're connected to Western and finding that Mountaineer family. Definitely wanna to touch base on affordability because that's a huge part of the college application process. Um, but first, before I get into that, I wanna talk about our student support services that we offer. At Western, we're all about helping you su su succeed in every way possible. So we have disability services, we have academic advisors, math tutoring and meta major majors, career services, EPIC mentors, every incoming student at Western is assigned an upper graduate student who's a junior or senior, whose job it is for you to be your mentor for your entire first year that you're at Western, making sure that you know someone before you ever even get to campus. And then on to that cost side of things, um, you can see here listed our tuition for our in-state students as well as our out-of-state students. They're coming in well under the national averages for both of those costs. 80% of our students are receiving some form of financial aid that are coming to Western, but 100% of our students are considered for merit aid. All of our students who are applied and accepted to Western are automatically considered for our academic merit scholarships. Our academic merit scholarships are available for you um, as long as you have a 3.35 GPA or higher. Um, so if you have a 3.35 GPA or higher, you can see the different tiers in the scholarship offers that we have for you. Uh, and those are available for all four years that you would be attending Western. We have additional scholarship opportunities that students can look into as well, including a first generation scholarship and a lot of scholarships depending on which academic major that you decide that you want to go into. Speaking of academic majors, we have over 100 different options for our students on campus that you can get involved in and explore. Within those academic majors, we have everything from your uh, the history, English, math, we have environment and sustainability, business administration is one of our big ones, and then we also have a new partnership program between Western Colorado University and the University of Colorado Boulder, if you're familiar with that university. Those two majors are mechanical engineering and computer science. Um, if you are going into one of those partnership programs, you spend all four years on Western's campus, surrounded by the Colorado Adventure, 
our small class sizes, that getting to know your professors and your academic advisors, but you end up graduating with a degree from CU Boulder in either mechanical engineering or computer science, both of which are top 20 programs in the US. So very, very affordable um, and a very unique option for our students as you're looking. Uh, but we want you to come visit campus. We are very fortunate in that we are able to have in-person visits on campus this entire year uh, to sign up for a time or if you wanna check out our virtual tour instead, if that's something you're more comfortable with, just go to western.edu slash visit to find those opportunities there. And then this is a funky year and we understand it. So we are offering a lot of opportunities for you to explore uh, what we're offering in a virtual setting. So we have virtual events happening this spring. Just this week here, we have a bunch of academic deep dives. So if you're at all interested in learning more about our mathematics, school of business, natural and environmental sciences or exercise and sports science groups, definitely check out those pages there. Um, it's western.edu slash recruitment events will get you to the calendar as well as some of our other events that we are offering. Um, thank you so much for listening. That was definitely a lot of information. I'm going to drop a few of those key links as well as my contact information in the chat, but I'm looking forward to working with all of you a little bit more. Thank you, Brianna. And so now let's learn about the Augustana Vikings. Eric. All right. Uh... Thank you guys very much for joining us. Make sure I got my share screen up. Okay, so um, again, my name is Eric Rowell. I am an admissions counselor here at Augustana College. And um, I'm very excited to be able to chat with you guys. Um, Augustana is a small private liberal arts college in Illinois. Uh, we're about three hours away from Chicago, um, about four hours from St. Louis. Um, so we're sort of dead center of all the, the major cities in the Midwest. Um, uh, we are ranked in the top 100 of all small private liberal arts colleges, um, and uh, we have a wonderful program here. So let me go through my slides with you. Uh, first, we're about 2,500 students uh, here at Augustana, so we are a small school. Um, this allows for our, our students to get to know one another very well and have uh, amazing adventures on campus and, and, and off of our campus. We have an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio. Uh, which means you will get to know your faculty very well at Augustana. Um, like others have said, you will get to know them by first name, but I would advise you still say doctor or whatever their last name is because professors get a little annoyed um, with hey yo every now and then. Um, we have about uh, 18 students or so um, on average in our classes. Uh, we have 90 majors um, at Augustana. Um, that's pretty exceptional for a small school um, like us to have that many majors. So there's a lot of variety for our students at, at Augustana. And we also have about 150 different uh, clubs and activities for students, including intramurals and, and um, Greek life and things like that. So there's a lot to be engaged with at Augustana. Um, one of our primary focal points is career preparation. Uh, we are very excited about showing you what your options can be based upon your skill sets and, and based upon your passions. Oftentimes, I believe students are interested in just finding a job out of college, which is fine. But we wanna help you find a career, something that you would love, something that you're very fit for. Um, so we wanna ask you a lot of questions during your time at Augustana to make sure we know what it is that you're truly passionate about and um, sort of gifted towards. Uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion is extremely important at Augustana. I am an alum of Augustana and I graduated a number of years ago. And um, when I was a student, um, diversity was very small um, in the sense of maybe five to 7% uh, of our campus um, had students of color. Um, fast forward to 2020, we're about 35, 36% uh, of students of color on campus, including um, international students. That's a tremendous leap for us. And we're very excited about creating an environment where people not only learn the subject matter, but they will learn from one another. Um, we're very committed to excellence inside and outside the classroom. Um, we want our students to be able to participate in the things that you love. So about a third of our student body are varsity athletes. Uh, we are NCAA Division III. Um, we have 27 uh, sports, uh, NCAA sports here at Augustana. Um, so if you have talent and you have passion, um, look at Augustana. Um, we've won uh, different um, conference championships in different sports. We've won national championships, both team and individual. Um, a quarter of our students are um, involved in the arts, so music, art, theater, dance. So if you have talent and passion in those areas, um, by all means, try to participate in them. Um, we have over, again, over 150 clubs and activities at Augustana. 
Um, we're also very proud of being top 10 in academic All-Americans. This means that we have the quintessential student athlete in the sense of people doing well in the classroom and on the field. The schools that are ahead of us in academic All-Americans include schools like Stanford, uh, MIT, and Notre Dame. So we're quite proud of being able to have uh, you know, great students that excel in all things. Um, recently, uh, or in the last 15 years, there have been tremendous developments on our campus. Uh, we've added new additions to, uh, to uh, residence halls and athletic facilities, academic buildings. Um, things continue to happen on our campus. Currently, we are building a new pool slash wellness center. Um, we have not stopped our, uh, our growth and our processes here at Augustana despite the pandemic. Um, so again, these are just a few pictures that we have um, just to show you some of the things that are happening on our campus. Um, as I mentioned, uh, career preparation is really important. So um, we have a program called CORE, which stands for Careers, Opportunities, Research, and Exploration. This is where you go to find out about different job opportunities, uh, study abroad experiences, um, interview prep. Um, this is a tremendous program that we have to help students get prepared for the life they want to have after they leave Augustana College. So this is something that hopefully you would take a, a tremendous advantage of um, if you were to join us here at Augustana during your four years. Um, one of the unique programs that we have at Augustana is we have a program called Augie Choice. Um, there's a $2,000 stipend that is given to every student here at Augustana. You can use that money for study abroad, internships, or research. Um, about 60% of all of our students will have at least one internship here at Augustana. About 65% of our students will leave the country during their four years for a study abroad experience or for an internship. And nearly all of our students will do research. Um, you can, there's a program called um, Senior Inquiry, where you will have to do a major research project within your major, whatever your major is. So you can have that sort of um, that experience to dig deep into a subject that you love. Um, these are just some of the, the places that we've been to. We've sent our kids to around the world. Um, again, 65% of our, of our students will leave the country. So um, that's a tremendous number to have. Uh, here's what we look for. Or here's you know, how to apply. Um, early action, early decision, and regular decision, those are the types of applications you could have at Augustana. Early decision basically means you're sold on us um, and you're, you're not interested in any other schools. Um, so we'll, we'll get a lot more information to you in the chat box, but again, we're very excited about you. Thank you so much, Eric. And last but not least, the gorillas of Pittsburgh State. Very good. The one and only gorillas, yes. So I am going to share my screen here. Okay, it was working just a second ago. I apologize. There we go. The one and only gorilla mascot. So welcome to the jungle. Everything you see and do uh, at Pittsburgh State or in Pittsburgh, Kansas somehow revolves around uh, the word jungle or the word gorilla or bananas. We have banana trees on our campus or gorilla statues all over town. So we're very uh, passionate community. It's really a college town. They love the gorillas. They love students there. Um, the, like I mentioned, the, the only gorilla mascot. So there's our split face gorilla logo that you'll see on license plates and on flags flying on Main Street. We're in the southeast corner of the state of Kansas, about two hours south of the Kansas City Metro and about two hours and 40 minutes or so from the Wichita area. So this QR code, uh, camera over that, and it will bring up a form that you can get added to our mailing list. Uh, my colleague Brandy is also on here. My name is Dana. Brandy is on the chat as well. And she's going to add in the form that you can also fill out to get added to our mailing list to uh, get more information and start getting uh, information about events and deadlines and things like that. So Pitt State, by the numbers, we're about 6,600 students, so a nice medium-sized university um, where it has 150 different majors, 150 clubs and organizations, nationally ranked uh, athletic programs. We have national championships, Division II football and track and field and things like that. But yet the class sizes do average around 20 students. So 22 to one is the student to faculty ratio. So we do have smaller class sizes. We don't have a classroom on campus that seats anywhere near 500 students. So professors do know you on a first name basis. They give out their cell phone numbers for students that have questions or need help. So it really is that personal touch that you might be looking for. Um, admission requirements at Pittsburgh State just changed this year. 
2.25 GPA on a 4.0 scale um, or a 21 ACT will get you automatically admitted. So that, that's an either or scenario. Transfer students, we're just looking at a 2.0 GPA. Uh, so that will be automatic. So here's a list of all our academic departments. Now, some of our academic departments do look at four higher ACT scores and things like that um, on an application package, um, more like your sophomore or junior year. So I always tell students, you know, aim for higher scores than those. And I'll talk about scholarships here in a second. So 150 different majors, we group them into four colleges, arts and sciences, everything from nursing and pre-med to chemistry, um, family and consumer sciences, communication, broadcasting, uh, criminal justice, and a lot, of, a lot of things in between. So music is under there. So really wide variety. College of Business, more specific with accounting and finance, computer information systems, management and marketing is probably our largest area there. College of Education has education majors, obviously, but also psychology, um, exercise science, and recreation degrees. College of Technology, really unique areas in automotive technology, plastics engineering, uh, graphic design, and, and others. And then exploratory studies. Studies, we still have that undecided program because we found about 30% of our students do come in as undecided. And so we can help walk you through that process. Um, fees and tuition at Pittsburgh State. So this includes, this is everything. So we, we build everything in here that we can think of. Um, flat rate for tuition is really nice at the top right. Um, that bullet mentions we don't charge per credit. So we charge um, a flat rate. So if you're taking three classes or seven classes, it's all the same cost. So you really get good value and more for your money. So 3,752, you can take a, a picture of this with your phone, it includes you know, as many classes as you want, as you want to take and includes all um, recreation um, memberships uh, to our gym and then also any football games, basketball games you wanna to go to, regular home season athletic events are included. The residence halls includes an unlimited meal plan as well. And so um, you don't have to worry about uh, buying meals and, and paying for things extra on top of that. And this is for a single rate uh, or a single room rather. So you don't have to share a room, this is the single room. So about 17,700 we say for everything combined, including books. Um, we do have scholarships based on ac academics and athletics, um, legacy scholarships for people that had parents that may have gone to Pitt State or grandparents, and then outside scholarships. You know, I always tell students to look into those as well. This, you can take a photo of this real quick too. So our honors college is our highest scholarship amount, 28 ACT, 3.5 GPA minimum to apply. Our deadline's January 15th every year for that, a little earlier than our regular deadlines, February 1st. As long as you have a 22 ACT, 3.2 GPA, uh, you're guaranteed at least $500 to $1,200. A lot of other academic scholarships as well. Uh, financial aid, just remember to fill out that FAFSA every October, um, or you can fill it out after that, but we recommend starting early um, for financial aid dollars. Our PSU school code is on there. Different types of aid, I won't walk through that too much. So campus living, we require freshmen to live on campus that first year, um, but there's always so much to do on campus. There's it's an easy walk to your classes. It's a five minute walk to class. Your meals are made for you. Um, your um, bathroom is cleaned and those kinds, there's a lot of benefits. I think people have um, a tendency to think I don't wanna live on campus, but you meet a lot of people that way. Um, they're, all of our ha halls are co-ed. There's no curfew hours and things like that. Um, so you meet a lot of freshmen, it gets you involved on campus and just a more meaningful experience. So we do have um, unlimited meal plan, as I mentioned here, laundry facilities and all the halls, several different types of halls on campus too. So whether you want a suite style living or more of a, a traditional type of room with a two person room um, that we've now made singles. So everyone has their own room, but it's a traditional kind of restroom shared down the hall. We have some of those buildings as well as some apartment styles. So students have a lot of opportunities for different options for living on campus. So athletics, it lists the different division two programs that we have. I mentioned we have a lot of success in athletics. Uh, PittStateGorillas.com down at the bottom if you're interested in participating in a sport. Um, I encourage you to go online and fill out our uh, prospect of athlete questionnaire, and that'll give you more information. 150 different clubs and organizations on campus as well. So get involved in something. Again, I mentioned it being a meaningful experience. It's about the academic side, but also about all those extracurricular activities. So whether you know working on campus or getting involved in clubs and organizations like a powerlifting club or knitting club or you know a cultural organization, international students. We have about um, 500 international students on campus, a lot of cultural diversity on campus. So you develop friendships. You have actually a higher GPA, studies have shown, when you're involved in campus activities. So there's our hammock club and there's some of our Greek life um, organizations applying for admission. And Dana, I'm going to have to cut you off because we are at six minutes. So okay, I know that you've got lots of good um, links in the chat. So yes. at this point, I would love to have everybody turn their cameras back on. And with the, the short time we have left, I would love to go through. And um, if you could, 
we'll start with Gretchen. So we'll go in the same order that you presented. What would one piece of advice be that you would give to these students as they're embarking on their college search? I, so I mentioned I'm from out of state. I actually grew up in Norman, Oklahoma. So for those of you who know where that is, that was a pretty big leap from Norman to Lawrence. And I was really excited to be a Jayhawk. And I thought, here I go, I'm going to jump into college and everything's going to be great. And that happens for a lot of people. But if you do hit a couple, if you have growing pains in the beginning and you miss home a little bit, if you do decide to leave home, um, somebody told me this freshman year, and so I always make sure to tell students, give yourself a full year, no matter where you go, give yourself that time to adjust because everybody, even if you stay home, I had friends that stayed in Norman and needed a year, and I had friends that transferred after a semester and ended up coming back um, a couple years down the line and saying, man, I really wish I would have given it more time. So trust your gut, go where you're excited, but give yourself time um, to adjust no matter where you go. Jason? Yes, so what I would recommend, I, I, I didn't do this, uh, but uh, I always tell my students it's the rule of three. Um, not necessary that you would do this, but uh, you will not end up graduating with the degree that you ended up starting out with. So you might change your degree three times. I've had students that changed it seven times. So the thing is, is that always keep your options open and try to look at everything that you're interested in. Uh, different degree programs, because you don't need to necessarily have that ready to go before your junior, uh, your start of your fall of your junior semester. Um, so I would recommend just um, be very open to different degrees and what you're interested in. Dakota, go ahead. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I would just recommend take advantage of all of the resources that are available to you and ask questions. I think I speak for all of my colleagues that are on here. Um, we are here to help you and your family navigate this process. I, um, both my parents were non-traditional students and I was the first child to go to college. And so um, don't be afraid to take advantage of resources that are in place, like your admissions counselor, your financial aid reps at whatever institution. Uh, that you're considering, we are here to help you and your family make this process as smooth as possible. Great advice so far from all of my colleagues. I'll touch base on a piece of advice I have for uh, the processing application side of things. Um, for my students who are listening that are juniors, uh, sophomore, freshmen, I recommend applying and getting accepted to your top three to five college choices wherever possible before Thanksgiving. Uh, that way you can roll into the Thanksgiving and uh, holiday season at the end of the year saying, I've been accepted to these top three to five choices. Um, it also gives you that real perfect thing to say to grandma when she's asking you where you, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? You're gonna, I'm still deciding, but I've been accepted. So I'm on my way. Um, and it just kind of helps ease that stress a little bit as you're going. Yeah, to piggyback on that, I would, I would say don't procrastinate. Do, do as much early as you can. Hopefully a lot of you are juniors on here today or even sophomores. And the more you do early, the happier you'll be your senior year. Um, visit as many college campuses as you can too. We all have different kinds of visit events on our campus and virtual tours, but getting on those campuses, I think really helps you know bump schools up, up the list or scratch them off the list. So that's my biggest tip when you're looking at schools and just freshman year, get involved. Um, there are resources available, like Dakota was saying, we all have supports in place to help you be successful, but get involved in organizations and just be open to meeting new people. So it's a fantastic opportunity. I'm jealous every, every year when I meet with high school students, I want to do it all over again myself. So <laughs> um, Eric, bring us home. Yes, I would say um, cut yourself some slack. You don't have to know what you want to do with the rest of your life when you're 17 or 18 years old. Um, there's a lot of pressure on you guys um, by family and friends and society telling you that you must know um, things about who you will be. Um, you use college to explore, to discover and understand who you are. Um, that is what college is for. Um, and, and as mentioned, you probably will change your major, uh, but that's okay. Start thinking about whom you'd like to be one day, but at the same time, don't try to fix yourself to something. Um, college is about understanding. And um, we're all, all of us are very excited about hopefully getting to know you guys. That's a great way to end this. I just think everybody needs to remember that folks like 
like all of us who work with students day in and day out are here to help you find out who you're going to be for the rest of your life. So on that note, I'm going to share my screen one more time and just remind everyone that when you click out of this session, um, you will have a four question survey pop up. So please take the time to answer those quick four questions so that we can continue to improve these offerings for future students or perhaps you in the future. That might also be something that you wanna do because while there are no more sessions today, we will be hosting another college fair in April. So if you didn't get to see all the colleges you wanted to today, um, definitely sign up for some in April or go back to the website at which you registered for this program and check out some of the recordings of this session and other sessions. So thanks again for joining us today. Best of luck with your college search and be well.